Case Analysis Part 5 Option Analysis Step 2 This video continues my discussion of the third link in the chain of your case analysis, the option analysis. You'll recall your option analysis must answer four questions for each and every option. How much will this option cost? Will this option allow the company to meet my decision criteria? How profitable will this option be? And in what ways can this option go wrong? To answer these questions, you must make projections. In this lecture, I'm going to talk to you about how you find data to make those projections, and then I'll discuss how you can assess whether your projections are realistic. So, first, how do you find data to make your projections? Now, there's no single simple answer for this question. Your costs, as I said in the previous lecture, may be the most straightforward. Costs may be given in a classroom case, or you may find reasonable estimates by performing some research or calling vendors. But when you start addressing questions like, will this option allow the company to meet my decision criteria, or how profitable will this option be, you're going to need to forecast what impact the option will have on future sales. Doing this well requires you to use creativity, intelligence, and some judgment. There's a couple of areas you can get future sales estimates. First, this one's the easiest. In a classroom case, if you're lucky, they may give you some hints of realistic projections. For example, a manager might say, you know, I think if we raised price by $10, we'd lose maybe 2% of sales. Great! You can use that as a base case projection. Other times, you may have to look at historical data. For example, if past ad campaigns increased sales by 5%, then that might serve as your base case for this new campaign you're proposing. If that doesn't work, secondary data may be available. Perhaps you're considering running a direct mail ad campaign. You've never done this in the past, so you have no historical data. but you do a little bit of research and you find a number of market research reports showing the response rate for a direct mail ad campaign is typically between 1 to 2 percent. You can use this finding to construct a profit model for your direct mail campaign. But what if there is nothing you can use to help you construct a realistic projection? This is a tough spot, but it happens more often than we'd like in real life. Before giving you some tips, of what to do, I want to frame this problem in the philosophy of what we're trying to accomplish here. I think this will be useful in helping you approach these types of situations. Even if you have really solid data, even if your research gives you confidence that your projections are spot on, here's the thing. They're just projections. No one can know the future. I'm not asking you to predict the future with certainty. What I'm really interested in is seeing how you make decisions in an environment of ambiguity, uncertainty, and risk. Even though we cannot know the future, we can gain an appreciation for the risks and benefits of different options. So, how do you approach the situation where you have no data to base a projection on? Here's some tips. One thing you might want to do is calculate the minimum increase in sales you need to meet your decision criteria and return a profit. Then consider how realistic it is to achieve that sales increase. For example, a 1% increase in sales to meet your decision criteria and earn a profit is much less risky than an option requiring, say, a 26% increase in sales. So even though you may not be able to make a projection, you can gain insight into how likely your option is to pay off. Sometimes, maybe you'll just make something up. You'll just assume sales will increase by 5% because, well, you hope it just does. This is a pretty weak approach. It's hard to make anyone confident in this analysis. Uncertainty like this sucks, but this is what you'll find in real life. We can't know the future, yet we still must make decisions today that are going to affect us in the future. But here's the thing. Maybe you have two options. Maybe you feel confident about one projection. 
your first option. This is backed by historical data and secondary data. Your other option, though, maybe you don't feel confident about it. Maybe you were forced to guess when making your projections. You might consider using that as a justification for rejecting the second option. Remember, the purpose here isn't about knowing the future. It's about managing your risk and making decisions in uncertain and ambiguous environments. All right, you've made some projections. Now you have to decide if your projections are realistic. How can you assess whether your projections are believable? Well, one general tip is to try and find multiple sources to back up your projections that you've made. For example, you're preparing a classroom case and it tells you if you do option A, your sales will increase by 5%. Think about where that information came from. Did one of the managers just pull that number out of the air? If they did, maybe you want to verify it with some research of your own. If there's no other sources to back up what the manager is telling you, then you need to think about how valid the manager's estimates are. Does he have enough experience in the industry to make reliable predictions? If, on the other hand, you're using historical data to base a projection on, think about whether the current situation is similar enough to the past for past performance to repeat itself. Maybe your projections need to be adjusted up or down to account for the current situation. If you're using secondary data, how reliable is the source of that data? If you got your projections from only one website, and that website was trying to sell you a service, well, maybe that data is biased. If, on the other hand, you found three or four research reports, and you used the lowest projection from those reports as a worst-case scenario, and the highest projection as a best-case scenario, maybe that's a bit more reliable. Also, think about what stage of the life cycle your product is in. Products in the growth phase typically see double-digit growth, maybe even triple-digit growth. Under these conditions, projecting an increase in sales of you know, 20% may be reasonable, maybe even pessimistic. But in the maturity phase, average growth rates are maybe 2 to 5%. Here, a growth rate of 5% may be optimistic. Now, you can also look at the company's past performance. If for the last five years, they averaged annual growth rates of only 2%, and the first option you look at promises a sales increase of 40% in one year, well, that's a huge jump. It is incredibly hard in real life to create a turnaround like that in one year. This is a signal you may want to look at your projections and really think about if they're realistic. And here's one final tip of things I like to see. When you're making projections, you should always calculate three outcomes. Your break-even, your worst-case scenario, and your best-case scenario. Your break-even is the minimum increase of new sales you need to cover the costs of the option. Think about how realistic and likely the option is to exceed this break-even point. Then, your worst-case scenario. Think about why you believe that this is the worst case. Is your worst case above your break-even? Will you meet your decision criteria? Answers to these questions give you a sense of how risky the option is. Then, your best-case scenario. Again, justify why you think your best case is realistic. Will your best case exceed break-even? Will your best case meet your decision criteria? Understanding these three points, the break-even, worst case, and best case, gives you a well-rounded view of the potential outcomes of an option. And there we go. We've discussed how you find data to make the projections needed for your option analysis, as well as some tips on how to ensure your projections are realistic. The next video in this series will look at making your recommendations.